That's a great work. Amen. 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 And trust me, God will reward you yes. openly yes. for what you did privately. Amen. 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 So I give honor to the Spirit of God who's becoming the head of my life daily. Amen. Yes. To my precious. Precious. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Apostle Alvin Johnson. Amen. Amen. Amen.
He doesn't fight fair, and neither do we. Amen. But being that the church is under attack, it means we're doing something right. Amen. 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 So whatever it is that you're doing, please continue. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Make him hate that you get up in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to speak to you from the topic, Lord Jesus. legislation teaching, and so now it looked like it done jumped on me. Hallelujah. But when on trial, see there are certain things that's happening now, and it seems like your faith is being tested, but I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you what to do, what to know while you're on trial. Amen. Hallelujah. When means at or during the time that. At or during the time that. Uh, it meant after which. And just then, it's implying suddenness. Now let's talk about this instant, because things can happen. There are some trials that, that seem to drag on forever, and then there's some things that hit you unexpectedly. There were some things that you weren't expecting, and it hit you. And so here it is. When? Mm -hmm. Just hit you suddenly. So it implies suddenness. It, 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 sometimes it can just come upon you and you don't know. You, where, 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 what? When did it happen? However, it's there. And so it would seem that the church is on trial now. Hallelujah. With everything the enemy is attacking. But by all means, church, rejoice. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Rejoice when you fall into the divers' temptations. Amen. Learn to rejoice like the dance said in the middle of it. And the devil don't have to like your rejoicing. You don't you don't need his permission to do it. Amen. And rejoice means to means to rejoice all over again. Amen. You hear that rejoice? It means to rejoice all over again. Amen. Hallelujah. It means to re-up your joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Rejoice again. Party again. Hallelujah, Jesus. When you fall into divers temptations, amen, when it seems like all hell is breaking loose, your option is to rejoice. Yes. Yes. Your only option is to rejoice. Amen. Amen. A trial is a test of the performance, qualities, or suitability of someone or something. Amen. It's a test of the performance, qualities, or suitability of someone or something. And, and so what, what that means is, is, is your test is going to put your money where your mouth is. Amen. Amen. You ain't, ain't going to have no strong confession and, and, and when the test comes, you fall apart and you fall to pieces. That's not how it works. Amen. It's going to test your suitability. It's going to test your elevation. And the devil hates that we get elevated here. Amen. Amen. Oh my, hallelujah. But we're going to keep elevating. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. We're going to keep growing in the excellency of the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to keep growing. Amen. Hallelujah. If you thought we had titles, you thought we licensed. So it talked about the qualities, the performance, 
Because what we do in here really doesn't. It really isn't what the devil is attacking. It's that testimony on the outside. Amen. Hallelujah. It's that life on the outside. Amen. Because he wants to attack that because he feels like if, if he attacks that, you'll stop what you're doing in here. Amen. But the devil is still. Amen. A black gap tooth liar at that. <laughs> It says it's a formal examination of evidence before a judge and typically before a jury in order to decide guilt in a case of criminal or civil proceedings. A formal examination of evidence before a judge and typically before a jury in order to decide guilt in a case of criminal or civil proceedings. A test of the performance quality or suitability of someone or something. In law, a trial is a coming together of parties to a dispute. To present information in a tribunal, a formal setting with the authority to advocate Claims or disputes. One form of tribunal is a court. And so it says it's a coming together and a presentation, a presenting of evidence. Amen. The, ev the enemy is always trying to get evidence on you, against you. Amen. And so he comes and the Bible says, Day and night, he accuses us before God. Amen. He's always trying to get evidence, amen, to be able to accuse you. Somebody say, the grace of God is bigger than any evidence against me. The grace, the grace of God, God is bigger than any evidence against me. What came, what came, what came that was supposed to destroy you, that was supposed to have your mind so bogged down, it didn't work. Hallelujah. Every single thing, I'm looking at and I'm hearing the testimonies of the people who were dealing with stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. And you wouldn't have been able to tell what was going on with Johnny's mom because she kept working. She kept moving. She kept doing. Amen. And she kept serving God. Amen. Hallelujah. You wouldn't have been able to tell all that was going on with Sister Kalia. Amen. Because God came and did it right away. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And it teaches us to trust God even the more that when God says something, amen, that you can take it to the bank and that's what God's going to do. Amen. And so it's teaching us that the devil is hating it, that we are growing in our knowledge and in our faith. Amen. He hates the fact that our faith has sprung forth. Amen. As eagle's wings and we haven't stopped trusting yet. He hates it, but that's on him. That's a personal problem. Amen. Go with me to Job, the first chapter. Amen. It said, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and the man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God, and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels. He was Uber. <laughs> and 500 yoke oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their house, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did Job continually. Mm -hmm. 
Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. So when you hear this uh, sons, it's talking about the angels of God. And the angels come to give a report to God, amen, of what they have experienced with you in the earth realm. Hallelujah. They come to give God, remember, when Jacob, amen, met up with the angel at Bethel. And the angel said, I have to go. I can't stay here, Jacob. And Jacob still said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And there was a changing of the guard during that time. The Bible says that angels were ascending and descending. Some were going up, amen, and some were coming down. Amen. The guardian angels were going to give a report, to take your prayers, to take, to take your worship, amen, and to offer it before God. And so that's what was happening. And so here it is. The sons of God came and they present themselves to give their reports. And it says, and Satan came also. He came to see what was going on in the bastard that he is. Because he has no right to be with the sons of God. He is no longer in fellowship with God, with the angels. He is a bastard child. As a matter of fact, he is the only bastard that there is. Amen. That's according to the word of God. Because when our mothers and our fathers forsake us, the Bible says in Psalm 27, then the Lord will take us up. It's impossible for a human being to be a bastard. But Satan will always be a fatherless child. That's what bastard means. It's not a curse. It's in the Bible. And so he came also to present himself. Now you heard about Joel. And you heard how he ran his life. He eschewed evil. He didn't want to be bothered with evil. But he knew that his sons were drinking. And then after they were drinking, they called for their sisters to come over. Y'all catch that? And so you see, uh, Job says, let me sanctify them. Just in case somebody did something that they weren't supposed to do. That's Job now, because he's trying to make sure his family stays clean. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, it says, and the Lord said to Satan. Now, you notice that it did not say, let me help us right here. You notice that it didn't say that God heard the report of the angels first. It says, and God said to Satan. And the Lord said to Satan, he, he, didn't give, he didn't allow valuable information nor strategy to be wasted on the ears of the enemy. Amen. Oh, but you're listening now that you're here. You have my attention. We're not going to share nothing else. Amen. You don't share your personal business with the enemy. Amen. Especially when you're on trial. If it's a yes or no question, you answer yes or no. You don't go and give out information. Amen. When you're on trial, your words ought to be few. I'm going to get there. Just give me a few seconds. But amen. Watch God. Watch how God talks. Don't start giving out. Well, I'm going to be here and I'm going to be there and I'm going to be there. Don't nobody need to know where I'm going on vacation. Amen. Don't nobody amen. need to know who I'm going with. Don't, amen. Don't, don't give out information amen. to the enemy. We were going down to North Carolina, I was going to preach, and it wasn't until we got in the city just by the hotel that I said I'm here to the church that I was going to. Amen. Amen. You don't need it because for everybody praying for you don't really mean you good. Amen. Everybody says, Lord, Lord, don't really mean it. Amen. Don't give out information. Well, we're going to be here, we're going to be there, and we're going to do this, and we're going to don't go because folks pray against your stuff. Amen. Amen. You gotta wonder sometimes where your trials come from. Amen. Sometimes it comes from within before it comes from without. Amen. And so you can't tell everybody where you go, and you can't take everybody with you. God knows I learned that. Amen. The about it. You can't. Because certain things go down. Certain things have you need folk with light faith. Amen. You need folk with like faith. Amen. You'll be wondering why so much stuff is happening and so many so how do you know all of that? And the only way people can know your business that are from the outside is if it's being given out 
from the inside. Y'all ain't gonna fool me. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you hear certain things in conversation, you just oh, peep it, church. Peep it. You don't have to respond. You don't have to say anything, but peep it. Oh, okay. Cool. Start watching. Because you can't, you, can't, you can't take everybody with you. You can't do everything with everybody. Everybody ain't going to understand. And you got to learn, amen, that you're enough by yourself. Amen. amen. You, 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 you got to learn that you can do this thing with or without folk. Especially when you're on trial. You see, God, he didn't he, he did say, okay, tell me what Tyree was doing to Tyree's enemy. He didn't say, tell me, tell me what Jacob was doing. He didn't say, tell me, tell me what Moses was doing. He said, Satan. <laughs> he, he, did, he, did not, he did not go into what was happening in the earth realm. He addressed the enemy in the room, Satan. You have to learn how to address the enemy in the room. Amen. 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 I'm just not going to spill all my business to you and then let you curse and pray against my plans and say how we're not going to make it and say how we're not going to be able to do this and say how I'm not going to have enough money I won't be able to afford that. You're not, I'm not telling you what I'm doing. Amen. Amen. Learn to address Satan. <clears throat> and you watch the book until you get out of the booger's presence. Amen. Amen. Watch the booger until you get out. Everybody don't need to know what you're doing. Amen. 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 Everything don't belong in the church chat either. Amen. Amen. You got Amen. questions about somebody? Ask it. Ask them. You got their number. Amen. Amen. Everything don't need to be discussed in the church chat. Everything don't go in the church chat either. Amen. Amen. You're trying to help us. Amen. Saw something. I got saw something. I did. Yeah. Yep, the answer was correct. Your answer was correct. <laughs> everything, everything don't go. You don't want to open any doors to give the enemy a chance to come in and start attacking. Amen. 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 If somebody wants you to know where they were, they would have told you. They would have told you. They would have invited you. But you have to be careful because things like that can... So let me show you something. If God is hedging us in and hiding us from the enemy, then here you come, hey, such and such and such and such. Now God explain to you and the enemy here. No, you have to address the enemy in the room. Amen. Right now I'm not at liberty. I have never been a person who has been afraid to tell you I'm doing this, but I'm doing that. I'm giving you details. So if you're trying to pray over there, I'm way over there. Amen. 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 You pray the house fall down over there, you pray the hotel fall down over there, and I'm way over there enjoying feet up, amen, toes in the sand like that there. Amen. Spread out. But you don't like you don't get you you have to learn how to keep some of your business to you. Amen. 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 No, nope, you don't need to know what plane I'm on. Yep. Nope. Nope. You'll know when I land. Amen. We're not talking about it till I land. Amen. Amen. You be praying for St. Thomas of the Virgin Islands. Amen. I'm telling you now. You have to learn how to keep some of you to you. Watch God and how God addresses this thing. That's a Satan. You don't discuss everything with the enemy. And sometimes you don't know who your enemy is. Amen. So it's best to be quiet. Amen. Everybody, listen. Yes, Hallelujah. <laughs> Some things we think are hidden. And I'm telling you, uh, uh, Pastor Audrey has been on. A 
pastor such and such and such and such, this such and such, and I see this, and I, and I saw that, and I saw, and I heard that, and I heard, you got to be careful of this, and you got to be careful. But listen, you think God don't hear your, or you know God hears your conversation, but you don't think God is telling it. But the king didn't know. So he thought his men were committing treason with Elijah. He said, he said, who is a, who is for Elijah? That who is for Israel? They said, no, it's not us, king. It's that prophet Elijah. And you don't know it. Or she's telling me of stuff. And she's on. Yes, God, thank you. You can't let the enemy know everything. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Why would this be the first thing that God says? It is because God knew what he was there for in the first place. Amen. Trust me, God already knew. That's why he turned to me and, and said, Let me give you something to do. Because you don't need to be here. Because, see, once he gets, and you're going to see it in the scripture, once he gets his permission, mm -hmm. he leaves the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Then God can discuss everything that pertains to you so that he can bless you, so that he can maneuver you around the enemy once the devil is out of your presence. Amen. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? There were, there were things, there were trials, there were things we went to, went through, and, and it was simply because the enemy came to petition God for you. And the thing about God is that God has such confidence in you that God will say, even if you do that, they're still going to love me. They're still going to honor me. They're still going to worship me. They're still going to bless me at all times. And my praises shall continually be in the end. And I believe in me. Hallelujah. And so we think that while we deal with what we deal with, God has forsaken us, and God is saying, no, the enemy meant it for your evil, but I meant it for your good. It was a way to slip him into heaven. It was a way to slip him into heaven without the enemy knowing that the enemy thought he was doing something. The enemy thought that he had him. You have to watch God. He's a He's a master orchestrator. You gotta watch God because he's orchestrating this thing. So I refuse to tell people, oh, where are you going? And somebody was asking me, and I was, I was getting annoyed. You know, so where are you off to? Sir. Amen. Because I learned, I, you, you, I promise you, you'll be praying about the Philippines while I'm in Kenya. Oh, I know where you're going. I know. Mm -mm. No, you No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't. You don't get up and tell everybody everything. You got. You got to learn. Address the enemy in the room first. You won't pray, pray, pray my car shut down in the middle of the trip. You won't. Hey, you, the devil is a liar. Amen. 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 You won't pray my plane crash. Amen. Amen. The devil is a liar. Thank you, Jesus. Because some folk will pray that it rain every day. You got, you got, you got, you got to watch folk in this season. Yeah. It's a different season. Because the warfare is not coming from where we would expect it to come from in this season. So now you got now your eyes gotta be like this on everybody. You gotta, um, you sleep with one eye open, as they say. Amen. <laughs> and you got you got you gotta watch the folk because God is talking. And because sometimes we're so closely connected to folk, let me tell you something. God is raising up a little prophet right there in Georgia. Pastor Audrey called me, hey, such and such and such and such, a 
pasta for such and such and such and such. Such, and such, and such. She loved everybody, but she, but, but my, my grandma is watching. Amen. And she on point. Saying such and such. They did such and such. You don't know what folks are doing. They're saying stuff. But you don't know what folks are doing in their basement. They're claiming Christianity. But you don't know what folks are doing in their basement. She, I'm telling you, you, we think it's hidden. But in this season of warfare, you got you, you, you got you gotta stand back. Amen. You gotta watch folk. Because for some reason you don't want my dream to come true. You, you don't you don't want you you uh 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 you don't need to know the address that I'm a bit you, you don't need to know nut nut of that. You have to watch folk. Amen. I've taught y'all, Apostle Paul taught me, no you never know what's behind Mama Lisa's smile. Smile with them. Amen. Yep, you get yep, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh-huh. Yep. I, oh, I know you, my friend. I know you for me. I know, and 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 cheer them on. I say I'll be in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> you didn't lie. Bye, Tobago. <laughs> but in this season. The way the warfare is coming, and while we're on trial, you have to watch folks. You gotta watch what folks are saying. You gotta watch what folks are saying. Well, where are you going? You gotta do that. Amen. I'm going to Dexter's laboratory if you want me to, Dee Dee, but you are not coming. <laughs> and you got, you, got to, you got to watch the folk. Amen. Want to visit my fairly odd parents? That TV show say, "Amen." You have to, you have to watch. You have this is a season to watch. Well, let's pray. Thought you loved me. I thought you were for me, but no, you're not. And now I got to watch you. Eyes wide shut. I'm watching. And the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect man and an upright man, uh, one that feared God and is you with evil? Here's how you know that there is satanic uh, surveillance on your life. Here's how you know when you hear Satan's answer, this is how you know there is, satan- there is something called satanic surveillance. Amen. It's called espionage in, in the world of warfare. Amen. He says, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doeth or doth Job fear God for naught, for nothing? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? What does that tell you about what the enemy is doing? It means if you know that there's a hedge on every side, it means that you have tried to break in several times. You have tried to break in on the right. You have tried to break in on the left. You have tried to break in on the middle. Amen. And on the back. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, you wouldn't know that there was a hedge all around me. Obviously, you've been trying to break in. But but, but l- listen to him now. He says, does Job fear you for nothing? Don't you got a hedge around everything that he has? Haven't you blessed him? Demonic surveillance. You've been watching me get blessed. The devil's been watching you get blessed. How? You've been blessing the Lord. And when the praises go up, the blessings come down. He's been watching you get blessed. He's been watching you get blessed. So no, there's a hedge all around them. No, 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 I tried. How many accidents has there been? 
I have this issue with the bumper, and I'm not after the bumper. I'm not after the bumper. They're going to tow it. They're gonna, I'm not after them towing it. I'm, I'm, I'm done with the point of trying to frustrate her. I'm trying to get at her. I'm not the car. I'm trying to get, but there's a hedge around her. devil had a plot and the devil had, let me tell you something 
who couldn't have said it better? You have good leaders here. Said, thou hast blessed, let's not say, thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. You studying my bank account? <laughs> you don't think that the you don't think that the enemy has that kind of surveillance on you. He's studying everything. He said, You done blessed him, and you keep increasing him too. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And God keeps increasing it. And God, God keeps, keeps increasing it. it. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He does. He does. Yes, he does. You are blessed and God's increasing it. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you ain't running out of money. You ain't running out of money. Come on here. Come on now. You ain't running, running out of no money. God keeps in. He's the God. He's a God of increase. You ain't running out. You ain't even reached your limit yet. What are you upset about? Hallelujah. You ain't even reached your limit. Your power can be maxed out. But you still haven't hit your limit yet because Jehovah Jireh is your provider. And he never said that he needed your bank account in order to be provider for you. Teaching key about tithes, and, and, and we were teaching him, and, and we were telling him God just wants a dime out of every dollar, and He says for you to keep the ninety. I said, "Key, is that fair?" She said, "Not really, but I said, but that's what He does. He wants you to have the ninety, but all He asks is for ten. That's how, that's how I talk about how to time. You, that, that's what you do, baby. You give God a dime out of every, out of every dollar. Mm -hmm. There's one system God gave us to be blessed. That was time. And he blesses the gift. He blesses a soul. Yes. That's why I sold the way I do. Because God has never failed me. He's never let me down. Amen. Amen. Not one time. And so I've learned to trust God even with my money. So if he says, give it, I give it. Amen. If he says, give it, I give it, because he's trying to get something to me, not something from me. Amen. And so you have to understand the laws that, that God gives us so that you can be blessed. There are laws that God he puts in place. Because he says, once you pay your tithe, he said, then I rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen. So what will come to eat up your money, God now pushes that back and holds that back and says, no, they release that. Amen. Because there's always a devourer trying to get you. Amen. Amen. There's always something trying to come up and to eat your money. But God says, once you release that dime, I hold that back. I, 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 I rebuke the 
devour. For your sake, I say you can't touch their stuff. You can't touch their money. I, yeah. They sown it. They've yeah. done what they're supposed to do. Amen. 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 Church, learn that. Amen. Tithe. Amen. Yes. Bless yourself. Because yes. tithing is about you. Amen. It's about you showing God he can trust you with more. You understand? It's about you showing God he can trust you with more. Because yes. if you do it just what little becomes much when you place it in the master's hands. But if God can trust you with $500, he certainly won't give you $5,000. Yes. Come on, church. Yes. Listen to this devil now. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Listen to that. Listen at him. He, he is so overconfident. He is so overconfident that if you lose things, you won't need God. You won't need the God that gave you the thing. And we trip over things, but God gave us the thing. Amen. 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 You ain't got that money moving on your own. Amen. Come on. God is doing it. And, and, and so God is trying to see. He's trying to get you. Listen. Those are things. I got you. Amen. Amen. Because I'll give you another one of them, but I got you. I'm not letting it happen to you. I got you. Went on trial. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. All that he hath, and give God in his confidence, all that he hath is in thine power. All that he hath is in thy power. That lets me know right there before God said that he couldn't do nothing. He's a child working on permission slips. Remember the permission slips you used to bring home from your school when they want you to go to the circus? He's a child working on permission. Amen. Amen. He could not do nothing. See, because this, um, let me further prove it now. Let's walk the book. He says... Did, or is, does Job fear you for nothing? Don't you have a hedge all around him? I haven't been able to mess with nothing. I haven't been able to touch anything that belongs to him. Now God says to him, all that he has is in thy power. Before then, the devil could do nothing. He could do nothing. Hear me clearly. He does not have all this power that, that folks say that he had. He, once he, he needed a permission slip. Yes. So that he could be able to take a bad lunch to Job's house. But he, before that, he could not do anything. So you know, you would say the devil ain't in control. The devil ain't in control. He waiting on God to give him a permission slip. Somebody, you, you, and the, the stuff you going through, as bad as it is, he needed a permission slip to even touch you. Amen. Amen. Watch this now. He says, only upon himself, put not forth thy hand. Don't touch him. Stuff you can touch. Him you cannot. Stuff you can touch. Him, you cannot. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Once he, you see that? He left. He left. He got what he came for, and then he left. Now God can figure out how to maneuver and how to do all that and listen to what the other angels have to say because they still have, they're still presenting themselves before God. But God dealt with the enemy first before, that's why you bind the devil before you pray. That's why you come against the spirit of espionage. Hallelujah. 
before you pray. That's why you destroy the enemy's espionage capabilities before you pray, because you don't need him identifying your stuff that you're praying about. Amen. Amen. That's why we seal the room before we pray with the intercessors. We're not just giving out information. Oh, we're going to pray about that, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. We, we ain't having that. You know, we're not going to give you stuff to attack us with. We're not going to give you wiles and strategy, amen, to come against us with. Nah, -uh. we destroy the enemy's espionage capabilities. The blood prevail. The blood blocked every way he would try to spy out our land. Amen. Hallelujah. You're on trial. When you're on trial. Thank you, Jesus. So the devil got a little power. But it was given by God. Mm -hmm. I skipped the verse, but it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Where you been? And Satan answered and said, unto, answered the Lord and said, From being to and fro in the earth, and walking up and down in it. You see, what John Ramirez was teaching is right. Mm -hmm. Second heaven, first heaven, and underground. Mm -hmm. Here's here his answer now. He says, from going to and fro, fro, fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. All right? So here it is. He gets the permission and then he leaves to go and do his worst. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God. Now this right here, this is important. This scripture right here, verse 16, is the most important out of the entire chapter. We're going to deal with that. So the fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee while he was yet speaking. There came another, there came also another and said the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels, and he carried them away. Yea, and have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. I am, I alone, I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came another, uh, all, uh, came also another, and said, Thy sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Job is on trial. And it seems like if it's not one thing, it says another. While one person is reporting bad news, here comes somebody. You know, sometimes at, 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 at bad times, at times of grief, you know, folks can say that. Yes. 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 Sometimes people can say the, the, the most unwise thing. Sometimes it pours salt in the wound that's already bleeding, that's already open. And sometimes the thing that the bad news people come and the things that people say, 
it, it really makes it worse with what you're already dealing with. You know, my mother used to say, and she never took her own advice, but she used to say, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say nothing at all. She never took her own advice. <laughs> People do. They come to you and you and, and and you know, we understand that God is sovereign, but I'm hurting. Don't tell me God's too wise to make a mistake. Don't like like don't tell me this is the best God had to offer. I'm hurting. Like, you know, say something that's gonna encourage me and strengthen me. And, but, but don't come and say things that just like, because we make it worse on the, on the person. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I know we got little churchy cliches, but just think about some of them cliches and what they say. We bow in submission to the will of God. It does not mean that it does not hurt. We had to bow out gracefully, but it did not mean that we were pleased. It, it, it didn't mean, it, that, that's not what happened. It, it meant we had enough of our shekat and our soul. We had enough sense to say, God, thank you anyway. Praise you anyway. Worship you still. You are still God, but I don't like it. That's what it, that, that's what it means we, we have to humble to the will of God. But it did not mean that we felt like it was okay. It did not mean that we felt like we, you know, like, you know, you know, like, you know, this is your sovereign will. This is, and we didn't feel that way. We did, I'm being honest. I didn't, I didn't feel that. I didn't feel like that. I didn't feel. I knew I had to humble to the will because it was done. Because of what he had already said to me. But it did not mean I liked it. It did not. It, let, 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 me, let me show you something. It did not even mean that I agreed with it. It did not mean that I was not upset with God. It didn't mean that. It just means I bowed out gracefully. It just means that, okay. That's what it actually meant. But you can, you can ask God today or tomorrow whether or not his apostle, his son, his servant agreed with his decision. And he will tell me, any of you in here, no, he did not. For a while, while on trial, I had a hard time speaking to him. I'm hurt. Never would have thought. Never would have thought. That's the truth. That's the transparency. I, I don't want to talk. Talk about. It. I love you, but I'm hurt. I love, I love you, but I don't agree. I don't like it. You can be super spiritual if you want to. You can think God does all things well in your family. I did not feel that way. I'm being honest.
but I'm having trouble submitting to what you what you allow. And that's the God's honest truth. We can say, oh, look, look, you're a chief apostle. That don't mean nothing. That, I, I promise you, it does not mean anything when you are attacked in that way. And you can say that, you know, because let me tell you something. Hurt don't know title. Amen. Hurt ain't scared of title. Amen. Grief ain't Amen. scared of chief apostle. Do you hear me? Because it is the way the Bible says that we all must go. And until death, the last enemy is swallowed up in victory, we have to deal with it. And he never said it was going to be a good thing. He just said, be ye steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. But it did not mean that I agreed with God. me in my response to him because I know that he saw what we did not see and he knows when enough is enough and in our human frailty we no 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 our prayers would say oh just bring him from way where he is and he's sitting there looking like that we said nope put the skin back on him put the put the muscle that's what we would say God said, God can I, can I, can I, I want. So that helps me. How do you see what we didn't see? You know, what we didn't know. And then when he's not sweating, 
do on Sunday. I said to him, I showed you that if I wanted to, I could have done it. I showed you all that, that if I wanted to, I'm talking about being on trial now because I just, I just came off trial. I just came off trial. Hope ain't been on no trial. I've been on trial. I don't know the trial. Hope been on no trial. So when she cried at stores and stuff like that. She didn't know I was mad with my father. I was mad with him. I didn't even, I didn't talk to Hope. Mad with her. I don't even know why. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm joking now. But I'm just saying, like, like I, I was I was mad. Like, hmm. 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 For your people to which was the You on trial? You on trial? Shh. Don't say anything. Until I'm able to say anything, I hush. Until I'm I hushed until I was able to, to, you have to, I guess, what do they call it? compartmentalize how you deal with certain things? Until you drop it off in the, in the, in the right, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like trying to fit a square peg into a circle, and you don't know what, you don't know how to do it. You don't know how to do it, and you don't know how to put it in there. You don't know how to get it together. And so until I'm able to do that, I want to just be quiet. Say anything because I don't want to say the wrong thing, and I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to say something that's going to make God angry with me. But I'm sure He knows how I feel. Like God ain't never been good. Okay, well He did good. And God was so patient, church. He was so patient and, 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 until the storm had passed. So let me fit a peg in the right place. And as I keep living, I'll be able to put another peg in another place. But it ain't just something that with all my spirituality, with all my Holy Ghost, that I can just run and just leap over a wall. And it's not that. It's a church I promise you, and I know I have power. I know it. But it's not that. It's not that. And I have to figure out a way. Jesus, we got, we got church, and we, we have other things to do. And I argue with somebody, let somebody take over for a little while. I said, well, God already gave me the word. I can't do that. And God knows I'm going to need the anointing to keep me. Because what, what, what helps me is that I get in the presence of the Lord or I feel his spirit. But I wasn't sleeping and I was at church. But well, one thing is for sure, I knew if I could get to the presence of God. When I tell you that I thank God for Albie and for her walking with me, through this thing. Because I didn't even talk to anybody. Right? I didn't want I didn't talk to Hope during this whole thing. I didn't talk to her. I didn't I didn't I didn't, I didn't want to talk. I didn't know what to say. I didn't I just and 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 our people, you know, she was she was she was there, she was comforting and faith and you know, all right, you know. I didn't want to talk to them. I was, I, I, I was, I was disappointed. I was disappointed. Me. In God. Me. In God. I was disappointed. I was. I was. 
You don't need me lying to y'all. You don't need me trying to act like, no. I just was like this Holy Ghost filled and I was just, you know, like I was like feeling like Sebastian, like I'm speaking in tongues. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. I was so disappointed with God. Ah, if, only, if only you knew. That's where I said, you want me to put this? No. Okay, I got this. And I asked God, I said, God, just let me get through. You know, we get through the little repass, Jesus. And I went home, and I got my little self in the bed, and I cried myself to sleep. And I was so disappointed. And I said, what, what, what do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you say when you don't know what to say? The song said, I'll stand still. Until his will is clear to me. I'll stand still. And so he's allowed me to get a peg in. I put the peg in. Yes. Now, in the meantime, while I'm on trial, I have to know I gotta bring her back. All right, Jesus, now that's the reason to pray. Because my family weren't fighting for. Amen. Amen. Sister were fighting for. Amen. When I had nobody, I had her. And so my family, so God, okay. But he was so patient until I was able to do a little bit of processing. Church, when you get in moments where you don't know what to do, let me let me let me try to explain. Like God understands so. I'm, he understands. So it's God, you know I'm a praying man. So you know this had to be something. If I stopped, you know I'm like, come on. I can, I can pray. I can pray in 13 minutes. And, and 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 oh my God, Jesus, the heavens. But God, you know that. But for me not to have the words to say. The devil's trying to do a two for one. That's why we're thankful to you for your prayers because it brought us through. Amen. It brought us through. I don't care if you just say, God bless her. Amen. God touched her. God healed her. God showed her. Whatever it was that you said, whatever it was that you did, thank you. For serving the food, for buying the food, for coming out your pocket. Thank you. Because all of that says, they're with you. That's what it says. It says they're with you. You're not by yourself. So when they come to tell Job, every, 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 every child of God is dead. And now, what I want to show you. Is it's Job's response. Please, at the 29th, I'm sorry, at the 20th, it said, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down on the ground and worshiped. Lord Jesus. Church, I want y'all to I'm telling you, women. Wife, cattle, children, sheep, pig, ox, cat, raccoon that was in the ceiling causing trouble. All gone. Same day. He didn't get a chance to grieve for the servants that first got killed before they came to tell the other ones and all the other stuff he had. And then he didn't, didn't get a chance to grieve them before they told him his children was dead and his other servants were dead. He didn't get, he didn't get a chance to compartmentalize. He didn't get a chance to put it together. He didn't get a chance to say, what? What happened? What is, he, he, you never hear Job talking during this time. You never, he just says people are coming to Job and they're saying to Job and that Job, this happened. And I'm the only one who escaped. I'm the only one. But you never hear Job say anything. And then when it's 
ripped his mantle, shaved his head. Oh, come on, if you're going before God, right, you got to go bald. Come on, here. Come on, here. You tell me what you want to tell me. Hallelujah. May not be a finger where you're going to heaven. You don't know. He said, but he shaved his head for us. <laughs> and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. Finally, Job speaks now and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord in all this. Job sin not. Nor, nor charge God foolishly. In all this, Hallelujah. in all of it, Job didn't sin in all of it, nor did he charge God foolishly, nor did he say, God, you did this to us. You did this to me. He, not, he said he, did, he didn't open his That's why Job didn't open his mouth. I'm going to show you something. How Job and Jesus, it said Jesus was brought as a lamb before his shearers is done. So he opened not his mouth. My God, Father, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Hallelujah. But he didn't curse God. He didn't say, you did this. You crucified me. You allowed me to, you allowed the man that I made from the dust to beat me all night long. It said he was brought as a lamb before his shearers. Dumb. Didn't know. He said, so he opened not his mouth. He opened his mouth. He had a whole lot to say. Because when devastation hits you, before you charge God foolishly, you should hush first. Amen. 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 Hush first. Try to connect the dots. Try to get it together. But hush before you say, God, it's your fault. How dare you do me like that? Before you go there. Said no. And all of them. There were servants, they were friends of his. They were faithful. They worked. He said, did not. Did not. Did not. Did not sin. Nor did he charge God foolishly. Point one, just to give you a little history on the land of Uz, simply known as Uz, was the region located southeast, southeast of the Jordan near the lands of the Chaldeans and Sabaeans, or Sabians. It was in fertile lands with ample crop and livestock, but, but, but bordered the desert. Did you, did you hear that? Do, do you hear about this magical land? Let me read it again. The land of Uz, simply known as Uz, was a region located southwest of the River Jordan, near the lands of the Chaldeans and Sabians. It was in fertile lands with ample crops and livestock, but bordered the desert. It is most notable for being Job's homeland. So it was a place that bordered the desert. Do you see how God will keep you? Do you see how God, while there's a desert, while there's a famine in other places, God has us in fertile ground. Amen. Yes. Us was awesome. It bordered the desert, but it had ample crops. It was stuff was growing there. Say I'm growing right where I am. Glory to God. Point 
two, two, three. Know what's in your possession from verse two. Know what's in your possession. It said in Job past 6,000 lists, know what's in your possession and what's in your arsenal. Know what's in your possession and what's in your arsenal. You don't know how strong you are. Whitney Houston has a beautiful song that says, I didn't know my own strength. But know what's in your possession. Know what you have, because then you can pray for it. Amen. And know what's in your arsenal so you can know how to war. Let me tell you something, dancers. Let me tell you something, worship team members. This will help you. The same way when you get up here and you expect your worship to move God, is the same way you have the same expectation at home. When stuff is going wrong, dance. When stuff is going wrong, sing. Because if it'll move God here, it'll move God there. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? It'll move. You could be. I'm telling you, Johnny's right in your dorm, right, right in your room. You could go to worship and you could go to singing and move mountains. Hear me clearly. And move. The power of God will show up right where you are, and Amen. God will move on your behalf. Amen. And He'll make you feel better. Because it has to work for you before it works for anybody else. And four. Sin entered in. From verse 4, sin entered in. Those children coming together. Sometimes sin will give you access, will give the enemy access to you. Number five, have a daily repentance. Have a daily repentance. Have a time where you ask God for forgiveness of your sins. Have a daily repentance. Number six. This is from verse six. Trials begin when the enemy comes to spy out your land. He's jealous of all that God has given you. And as they say, your name truly is in rooms your feet have never been in. Your name truly is in rooms that your feet have never been in. You don't know when the devil is petitioning you, petitioning God for you, petitioning God for your stuff. You don't know. From verse 7. The enemy answers to your God. The enemy answers to your God. The enemy answers to your God. He can't do nothing without God's permission. He ain't got that type of power. God is sovereign. Remember, hell is a kingdom. Darkness is a kingdom that has no king. Even the enemy answers to your God. So he don't have as much control as you think. And let me tell you something, church. Never feel bad about reminding him of that fact. No, no, you answer to my God. You answer to, my God is sovereign. You are not. My God is omniscient and omnipresent. And his love is infinite. You have none of that. Remind the devil of that. As they say, when the devil reminds you of your past, reminds him of his future, that he's going to burn in the lake of fire forever and ever. And ever. And ever, ever. Remind him that that's what's going to happen. Verse 8. 
a million steps ahead of the enemy and has confidence in you. He has confidence and great faith in you. So God will allow the trial. He will allow the trial because he has confidence and because God has faith, God believes in you. And so he will allow it. Number nine. Verse nine. The enemy knows those who are great threats to him. The enemy knows those who are great threats to him. The enemy knows who's great. Now tell somebody, say, that's you. That's you. So that's you with your praying self. That's you with your fasting self. That's you with your prophesying self. That's you with your laying hands on the sick self. That's you with your preaching self. That's you. You're a threat to him. Now watch this. Count your blessings. Don't let the enemy count them for you. Amen. Amen. Always remain grateful. Count your blessings. He said, you bless God with this and that and that. Don't let the enemy count up your blessings. You count your blessings. Name them one by one, the song says. Be forever grateful for all that God has done for you. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth unto all generations. Be thankful. Don't allow the enemy to tell God how blessed you are. You tell God how blessed you are. Amen. 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 You blessed me. I'm blessed among many. Always remain grateful. Always. Lord, thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. God, thank you that you made a way. Thank you that you did it. Thank you that you will. Thank you. Always remain grateful because the enemy is counting up your stuff to make sure he can attack you with it. Amen. So God, he said, ah, uh -huh. Job, don't fear you for nothing. He got this. He got that. He got that. He got a hedge way around everything. You bless all that he has and you keep increasing it. Don't let the devil count your blessing. You count it. You go to God and tell God how blessed you are. Never would have made it. Mm -hmm. Never would have made it without you. Go to God and tell him, I wouldn't have made it this far without you. Amen. There were some things that was designed to make my mind snap, as the young pace would say. But look at your neighbor and say, by the grace of God, by the grace of God I'm still here. I'm still here. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 10. Divine protection is already yours. Divine protection is already yours. He knew the hedge was there. He recognized the hedge. Amen. And obviously it wasn't the first time he had seen a hedge. And guess what? It won't be the last. God has got you hedged in. He's got you covered. Amen. He's got you blood blocked. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Eleven. The enemy is jealous and is always after your God-given stuff. The enemy is jealous and is always after your God-given stuff. Now watch this with the hopes of destroying your future. Where the devil gets it twisted is that we don't worry about stuff. We don't worry about stuff. We, we, we're concerned with our salvation. We're concerned with our souls being right. We're concerned with being covered under the blood. We're concerned, hallelujah, Jesus, with our ministry. But he believes if I attack, if I attack your stuff, then I got you. That would make us carnal saints. Well, if I can't wear pride, I'm not going to church. If my 
shoes are not red at the bottom, then I'm not serving God. That would make us carnal saints. It would make us carnal if that's a, we would be worldly minded. If that's all that, that we were worth, if that's all we felt we were worth. So if you attack my stuff, if you attack my things, then I can't serve God anymore. That would make us carnal saints. Worthless. My worth ain't found in, in no gold, no diamonds, no platinum. My worth is found in Christ. Amen, Amen church. Amen. That's what your worth is. He thought I was worth saving. He gives me my worth. I wasn't fit to live and wasn't ready to die. But he saw so He saw the best in me. Come on, church. That's what it is. Your worth is found in Christ. The song said, if I lost everything and didn't have anything, and you were the only thing, I'd still have everything. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Of the song said, I love you forever. Even if it never gets better, hallelujah. I love you forever. It ain't about things. God can always replace things. So he does that with the hopes of destroying your future. Because he believes we're attached to stuff. Dear God. Twelve. Your stuff is fair game. But this time, you're off limits. Your stuff it's fair game. But this time, you're off limits. Somebody should shout hallelujah for that. Thank you that you're not allowed, that you're not allowing him to touch me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that it's not the sickness in my body. Thank you, Jesus, that you're keeping me. Amen. And you're covering me with your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thirteen. God will test the very core, the very core of your confession, your faith, and your love for him when God is confident in you. He will test the very core of your confession faith and your love for him. He will. Now let me explain to you something about verse 16. And babe, if you could just put that back up on the screen for me. I want to show you something. It says now, while he was yet speaking, there came another It said, the fire of God is falling. I told you this was the most important verse. From heaven and hath burned up all the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. All that Job had was in Satan's power. But here comes the servant to say, the fire of God, the devil wants to make it seem like God did it, like God took my nephew. He wants to make it seem like God did it. And, and it's so important because you can't fall for the okie doke, as, Ma, as Mala used to say. You can't fall for the okie doke. He will try to make you be angry with God. God did it. Now, why was it now? Here it is. All that Job has is in the devil's possession, is in his power, rather. But it was the fire of God that fell. No, he's the power of the prince of the air. It wasn't God, it was him. But he wants it to, he wants to make it look like God is now your enemy. He wants it to look like during trial. He wants it to look like, no, 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 God left you. God forsook you. And that's why you're dealing with what you're dealing with. Now, here it is, the devil is on it. Now, the other time it says that a, a, a wind came. Now, who's in charge of the wind? And the fire, we would automatically say God did. Don't fall for the trick. God is still a loving Father. He's Amen. still a loving God. Don't fall for that trick. Oh, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned. 
seen. Sometimes before you recover from one thing, another hits you. But Psalm 61 verse 2 says, When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Amen. I got some place I can run to. You may have to lead me there through your prayers. You may have to lead me there through your intercession. But by God, get me to the presence of God. Get me to the rock that is higher than I. If you feel like I'm overwhelmed, I always talk about how the man who had real good friends, who was disabled, and they tore the roof off the house, and they lowered him into the house while Jesus was coming into the house, so that Jesus could pray for him because everywhere else was so crowded and they didn't think Jesus would be able to get him. Your real friends are those that will get you to the presence of God when you can't get there for yourself. I don't hear you in here. Okay. I'm telling you, they, they invented something. They invented a pulley in order to get that man down into that house that Jesus was going to to get him healed because the crowd was too big and sometimes you're crowded by people during your time of grief. Everybody wants to talk and everybody wants to be around them and you just need a moment to, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. You just need a moment to cry out. You just need a moment to say, God, what happened? You just need a moment to hear from God or to at least try. But the house is surrounded. But you need people that can tear the roof off and lower you into there and get you into the presence of God. Even when you can't get there from yourself. Those are real friends. It's those that show up with gifts. It's not those that show up with prophecies. It's those that get you in the presence of God. Praying for your sister. Praying for you, bro. God's going to bring us through. Wait a minute. You didn't lose nobody. If you lost somebody, I lost somebody. God's going to bring us through. Amen. Amen. Verse 20. Worship is your weapon. Worship is your, while you're on trial, worship is your weapon. Hear me. Worship is your weapon. I listened to Emmanuel Holyfield's testimony when he was uh, going to fight Mike Tyson. He called his wife, he said, I'm scared. She said, did you worship? No. Put the music on. Back there in the locker room. Put the music on. And go into worship. And like David, you can go out there, baby, and you can slay that giant. Amen. Put on Fred Hammond. I don't hear me. Put on Fred Hammond. And then he came down the aisle. With it. And by the time that worship music had hit Mike, he wasn't no good. <laughs> by the time that worship hits your enemy, he ain't no good. Amen. Ain't no fight left in him. That's why you worship with all your heart. That when you're on trial, your worship is what's going to get you through. Amen. Amen. And so you worship with all your guts. You hear me? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. Twenty-one. Couple that with your praise. Couple that worship with your praise. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Naked. Came I into this world, naked am I leaving. He said, the Lord gave and the Lord took away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God, I bless you, is how we would say it today. God, I bless you. Ain't nothing left for me to do but to worship you. What did, what, what, what did, what did uh, 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 Jonathan Nelson say? My father said, after a move like that, ain't nothing left to do but to work and but to praise you. Give you glory. Give you praise. Amen. Amen. 
Now, this is one thing. The last thing is something that can get us in trouble if we're not careful. Let your lawyer speak for you. <laughs> Let your lawyer speak for you. The Bible calls him an advocate, which means lawyer. Let your, let your lawyer speak for you. You don't go to court and have a lawyer. And let me tell you something. I was, I, I was, I was, Lord Jesus, let me put my business out here. I was getting a divorce and couldn't afford a lawyer. Hear me clearly. Couldn't afford a lawyer. But I said, God, you're my lawyer. And when they asked me who my lawyer was, I said, I am. And they said, oh, you're going to defend yourself? I said, no, I am is my lawyer, sir. The judge said, wait a minute, young man. Who? I said, I am. He's going to defend me. Okay. But when I am defended me, I took the other lawyer down with our Lord. Amen. 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 He said, y'all go outside and talk. And the other lawyer was trying to bully me. You're going to do this, and you're going to do that. And, gonna, and I, when we went back in, the judge said, uh, Mr. Johnson, have you guys came to an agreement? Watch this. My wife raises her hand. Ex-wife raised her hand. You're out of, I, no, we, he said, he said, ma'am, you have a lawyer. You will not make an open show in my court. Be quiet. Sit down. Listen to your lawyer. Watch this. He says, now, let me ask you again, Mr. Johnson. I said, no, this guy came out here and started trying to bully me and telling me that this is what I'm going to do. He said, I've never agreed to that. He said, I've never said you had to do that. He said, whatever's all you pay when you get ready. I didn't give you a date or anything like that. Oh, well, I won the case then. <laughs> I am was my lawyer. Amen. I said it and I meant it. Yes. Jehovah Nissi, my banner and my conqueror, he was my lawyer. He was my advocate. And he took the lawyer and I said, now you can practice all this law. And here this little black boy from the ghetto just took you down. And the judge wouldn't let him talk anymore. Mm -hmm. I am is my lawyer. Amen. He goes before me. The Bible says, say to those with a fearful heart, it is, it is the Lord that goes before you. And the reason why you let your lawyer speak for you is so that you don't charge God foolishly. You don't start blaming God for what the devil did. Amen. You do not blame God for what the devil did. But when you're on trial, trial is tough. But God is with you. I want to pray for everyone in this church that is on trial. I want to pray for those watching who are going through something. Who are dealing with some stuff. And maybe no one understands. Maybe no one gets it. Maybe you've encountered people who have, who have, who have said stuff foolishly to you. Thinking that they were comforting you. Let me pray for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I am asking that you would strengthen and comfort your people, God. While we're yet on trial, God, we know that the warfare has grown against the church, but the blood prevail even now, God. God, everyone watching, God, everyone watching, God, I'm praying for them now. I'm praying, God, that their faith would not fail you, that their faith would not fail them, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that we would come out of this hell that we're in on fire in the name of Jesus Christ, God. I pray that you would bring us out with a strong and a mighty arm, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask that you would roll up your sleeves now, God. God, that you would fight for your people, God. For one of us can chase a thousand, God. Let us put our thousands to flight, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Two of us can put ten thousand to flight, God. Let us put our ten, our ten thousands to flight. In the name of Jesus. And God, come.
people uh, and give us the blessings that the enemy is trying to block God uh, and give us the strength, give us the wisdom, give us the knowledge to now maintain God uh, what you have given us God uh, what you will give us, prepare us oh God for the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and adds no sorrow for the wealth of the wicked that has been stored up and laid up for us. Prepare us, God, because the enemy doesn't want us to get it. He doesn't want us to get our confidence back. He doesn't want us to get our strength back, but the joy of the Lord. Joy of the Lord is our strength. Lord, in the name of Jesus, and we serve you, know this devil, that no matter where or which part of our lives you're acting up, you are still under our feet and the blood still prevails against you. You are still blood blocked in the name of Jesus. And you can't have our families, and you can't have our possessions, and you can't have our money, and you can't have our ministries, you can't have our destinies, you can't have our anointing, you can't have our power, you can't have our peace, you can't Just for me. And I believe that you're coming back just for me. 
I confess you now as my personal Lord and Savior. Save me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. I am saved. I am saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, please let us know. Amen. Type it in the comments. Amen. And let us know. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We mean business when it comes to soul saving. Amen. Hallelujah. And witnessing to souls. So if you said that prayer, please uh, comment and let us know that you said something. Amen. We want to know that. We want you to know that Jesus saves. And we want to know that Jesus saved you. Thank you. And God bless you. Oh, one thing. One more thing. If you would like to sow, the cash app is Chief Apostle 74 at Yah. I'm sorry, there. I'm going to give you money. Give it an email. Now it's cheap, it's dollar sign. Chief Apostle 74. That is our cash app. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.